Hi, this is Gilles, Radio Proper. If you haven't been living in a cave lately, you certainly have heard of FT8, the uh, digital mode. It has taken the HF bands by storm. Now, I've tried FT8 and honestly, it's not for me. I find it absolutely useless and boring, but it certainly is efficient. It does have zero applications for prepping, but you know, for people who like to uh, collect uh, call signs and contacts, I guess it does the trick. FT8 is not made to exchange information. It's just for computer contacts. But there is a new mode that just came out, FT8 Call, which is different from FT8, but based on the same technology, so very efficient. It is a chat mode. I didn't know anything about it, but Julian OH8STN at Survival Tech Nord does use it and he's tried it in the field and published a few very interesting videos. So I thought I better have a look at it. The question is, of course, uh, should it be considered for prepping and could it be used in a survival situation? It has some interesting features. One of them is the possibility to forward a message to a station via another station. It also has drawbacks, of course, and the one that concerns me the most is the time constraint. Like other modes in the same family, FT8 Call uses a chunk of time for receiving, then a chunk of time for transmitting alternately. So your computer or tablet must have its time set very precisely from a reliable time source. Of course, you can get accurate time from a GPS, for instance, or a time station on your radio. But still, uh, you know, it's still a constraint that you have to work with. Now, of course, let's be honest, in most situations, you are going to be able to find an accurate time source. So it's not so much a problem, but you know, I like to prepare for the worst. So mm, something to consider. It would be great if stations using FT8 call could uh, synchronize each other time-wise, but I'm not sure that's possible. Now, before we go any further, I'd like to reiterate the fact that I'm just not a big fan of digital modes, and that's a personal preference. They do work really well, and certainly Julian has shown that you can use uh, digital modes in the field very efficiently. I'm just a minimalist, and I prefer to use the strict minimum amount of gear uh, for a certain mission, and uh, that's why I like tiny Morse code radios because uh, it does everything I need. But it would really be stupid not to look at these emerging technologies. Someday we might just get a integrated tablet with HF transceiver. And that day, believe me, I'll be the one buying one right away. But we're just not there yet. Now, of course, not all situations are, you know, dire end of the world, <laughs> SHTF, uh, Teotuaki situations. And uh, it's actually hopefully unlikely that we will encounter one but you know things don't always go well and that's uh, what i like to consider that said i can really see why julian and a lot of other people are really excited about ft8 core and i am also interested and pretty curious about it i can definitely think of some people who could uh, really benefit from ft8 core and i'll get back to that later but first let's look at my setup I want to install uh, FT8 Core on my laptop computer, which is running Linux, and uh, let's see how that turned out. So let's do the installation. I already have the file. I will double click, open the uh, package installer, and that starts the installation. Hopefully everything goes well. And uh, unfortunately, I already have a problem with libc6. Uh, too recent version uh, I guess I used uh, the file that is the most recent one so I'll do it again and this time I'm using the uh, the previous uh, version for uh, you know the previous version of Linux this time it seems to be working though and I'm really glad that they do have a version for Linux as well as Windows uh, so many amateur radio programs do not have uh, Linux versions uh, or Mac versions. By the way, FT8 Call also uh, has a Mac version in the works. So 
now I'm looking for the program and unfortunately I'm not seeing it so I don't know where the uh, shortcut went that's all right I'll just look for it here I just typed uh, where is ft8 call copied and paste the second line and uh, oops there we go and it just opened so now it is working excellent now i'll have to go on with the uh, configuration i guess let's go full screen so here is my uh, ft8 call station we have of course a computer here and i have my uh, t1 tuner the Elocraft kx2 i have a uh, mini pro sc interface uh, plugged in the usb cable right here the uh, data cable is connected to the radio into the uh, speaker and microphone jacks i have three 18650 cells and uh, i added a uh, the uh, control cable here for the kx2 actually that's the cable i use for upgrading the firmware but i think it does provide a rig control so that's what i'm testing now to see if it does work now this is of course a uh, <laughs> A configuration setup if I can call it uh, we're not in the field and I'm wearing pajamas so <laughs> you're not going to see me but I'm definitely going to try to make this work well I'm not quite sure it's working but I'm definitely going to try to tune the radio see what happens okay 1.1 to 1 very good now we get back to the setup. I'm going to set my call sign, F4WBY, the grid, uh, Juliet, Oscar, 10, uh, Lima, Sierra. But I think there is only a uh, spot for four characters here. So I don't know much about configuring FT8 call. I guess I really should have read the manual, but we'll try to do uh, the best possible. So uh, I'm not going to touch that. QTH, I'm simply going to put near Lille, NR Lille, because nobody's going to know my town, so not a problem. Station message, nothing. Power, uh, yep, I'm going to set that to 5 watts, which is what I'm outputting with my KX2. Display distance in miles, yes, that's for you guys. <laughs> Otherwise, I'd use metric. Uh, auto reply no and that's about it i guess uh, radio i'm going to choose the uh, of course the allocraft kx2 if there is one and uh, i don't see it so i guess i'm going to have to choose the allocraft kx3 which is the uh, closest model so let's do that all right so uh, the rest of it uh, not quite sure that's for rig control i'm going to set that to usb and uh, hmm, PTT method Vox, that's fine with my interface. Uh, USB here for the mode. And uh, well, that's about it really. I'm going to test. And oh, now of course it doesn't work. <laughs> I have used rig control before on the uh, KX2, but uh, I don't remember the settings exactly. I'm going to have to look into that. All right, input uh, USB audio codec, same for the output. I'm not going to touch anything else. This, eh, nothing here, nothing here. And I'll just leave everything as is for my first try. So uh, yeah, that's about it. Uh, let's just uh, give it a shot, guys. See if I can uh, receive uh, traffic and uh, maybe uh, make a contact, who knows? Oh, and uh, yep, I get an error here. Darn, always something. Well, it's been a struggle. I had to set the uh, rig control to none because I couldn't get it to work. But I seem to be receiving the uh, green bar here is going down when I turn down the volume. And it went down to zero, I put the volume to 10 and it seems to be all right. And if I click on tune, it does key the radio. Boom, transmit, so it does work. Um, I'm just going to wait a little bit so uh, stations populate here. I'm not quite sure how to do that. I still need to explore the software a bit.
So it does seem that I am receiving just fine, and that's great news. Uh, the uh, computer hasn't transmitted yet, so I'm, I'm not quite sure if it will. Uh, hopefully, I select the spot, so I think it should send my um, call sign out in the air, but uh, it just hasn't happened yet. But obviously, I haven't read the manual, so I'm not quite sure what uh, the software is supposed to do. I know that if I see uh, contacts on the left side, I should be able to contact them. Uh, those are beacons. I see one beacon, so uh, I'm not going to contact a beacon, of course, that wouldn't work. Uh, so I'm going to wait a little bit to see if uh, regular stations show up. Delta Oscar 3 Bravo Romeo Golf. Oh, and it appeared on the left side, and that also uh, is a beacon. Well, let's try to uh, transmit. I don't know. I'm going to click on CQ and uh, see what happens. Okay, JO10, CQ, 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 JO10. But it doesn't say from whom, so I'm going to put my call sign here, and I don't know why it hasn't. WBY. And K at the end. And it says sending, so we'll see. Well, it looks like there isn't much activity, <laughs> and uh, the band is closed, and um, even 40 meters, there's absolutely nobody. But I am here, F4WBY, and uh, yep, that's it, that's me, on 3.582. I like the fact that uh, you have the stations here on the right uh, for the all call, and that you have their distance in mile. Uh, in miles. You also have uh, their signal reports, so uh, you know uh, how many decibels uh, you are getting them, if it's above or below the noise level. Here you have, it seems, all the uh, conversations going on, and on the left side you have the uh, station received. And uh, of course tonight uh, <laughs> there isn't much, but uh, this is pretty interesting. I'm not uh, quite sure what to think about it, but uh, I'm definitely going to experiment more. And uh, this was just a setup, quick setup of the software and the radio just for testing. And uh, now of course I probably need to read the manual and uh, have a better look into uh, FT8 Core. So it looks like I did make a contact. SV8. Uh, ANW. I'm still uh, <laughs> learning how to use the program, so it's not that easy and it's kind of slow. Yep. Signal noise ratio minus 16. So, very good. We're in business. This was just a quick setup and test to uh, get me up and running. Now that it works, it is time for me to do some more experimentation and find out what this digital mode can do. I could see how it would be useful for, say, uh, people on the ocean, sailors, who have a, a digital setup uh, in their boat. Because, of course, uh, in that case, you don't have to carry your gear everywhere and, uh, uh, you know, worry about uh, charging batteries and having cables and a computer or tablet and all that stuff. It's already in your boat. So, uh, that would be a safety factor to have uh, an efficient mode like FT8 Core. I don't think I would use it as a primary means of communication for survival, but I still have to test it in the field. <laughs> Wouldn't it be great to uh, contact Julian and see if we can have a contact using FT8 call? I'm hoping uh, that will happen. So stay tuned for part two. Have a good one.